Hey there, and welcome to this episode where we are going to talk about the different forms or the different types of OCD that can develop in a person's life. And so um, for those of you who don't know, my name is Matt Cotty, and I'm a licensed clinical social worker and the founder of Restored Minds. And on this episode today, what I want to do is I want to outline just a, a kind of broad picture of some different types of OCD or subtypes of OCD that can form. Now, Again, OCD is an anxiety disorder, right? And, you know, there's the four components of the obsession, the anxiety, the compulsive behaviors, and the relief that the person experiences from the compulsions. Now, in this, what I want to talk about are, are basically some of the different obsessions or the themes that people will obsess about, you know, and then kind of, you know, make an overarching kind of... Um, idea of, of the different themes. And then what, um, as we move forward in the series, I'm going to cover some of the different themes in depth, right? You know, really go and dive into them. And so, you know, to, to really kind of outline some broad forms of OCD, we have things like contamination. Now, again, just in this subtype of contamination, you're going to see people can obsess about all sorts of things. And that's why there's no way I'll be able to cover every type of of OCD because people form new forms of all OCD all the time. Even, you know, this year, right. People developed, uh, you know, COVID-19, right. OCD around COVID-19. So that might probably wasn't a subtype before we knew about COVID-19, but this is what I mean. It can form about social media and all sorts of things. But when you have contamination, right. Um, you know, there can be things like, you know, fear of AIDS or, you know, bloodborne pathogens. and there can be, uh, you know, fears of, uh, other, you know, like sexually transmitted bodily fluids, right? There can be fears of radiation poisoning, of, you know, of, um, you know, of getting a COVID-19, right? And so when we just look at contamination, there can be environmental pollutants, right? You know, so contamination can take this huge spectrum of all these different things that people can be fearful of just in this one subtype of OCD. And that's why, you know, while subtypes are important to understand, it's also important to understand that the loop works the same way because one of the problems that I found with subtypes is people will think that their subtype is different or special for some reason. And the reality is it's not. It works. This, it's the same exact mechanism, right? But so there's those are examples of some contamination obsessions. And, um, you know, then there's things like perfectionism obsessions, right? Where people will get caught into the idea of like, well, this needs to be perfect, or I need to write this perfectly, there can't be a misspelling, or, you know, I need to say something perfectly, I need to hear this perfectly, so they'll have people repeat stuff again and again, right? And the fear is usually, like, what if this didn't happen perfectly? And usually, underneath that, there's a fear of something bad happening as a result, right? Like, if I didn't hear it perfectly, I might have missed, like, very crucial information, or etc. Right. Then there's, um, you know, uh, driving, you know, fears around driving with OCD where like, you know, people might be afraid they might've hit someone when they were driving and they go back and check. Right. And that would be like what you might call hit and run OCD. Um, and then there's a whole basically spectrum of OCD called what used to be called pure O OCD. Right. And in this, you know, pure O OCD, it was thought previously that these obsessions only exist and there are no compulsive behaviors, right? So it's purely obsessional OCD, but that doesn't exist, right? And I want to be very clear about that because that's a myth because in every case of pure OCD, there's always compulsions. They're usually just mental compulsions or avoidant behaviors or reassurance, right? So every time that we actually like dig a little bit, we always find compulsive behaviors. Um, but the pure OCD kind of goes into you know, three main categories where you have intrusive violent thoughts, intrusive, you know, sexual thoughts, um, and then intrusive thoughts or, you know, doubts and concerns around uh, religion, right? And so the intrusive violent thoughts could be things like fear of harming yourself, harming others, right? Um, you know, fears of, you know, accidentally hurting someone or, you know, like if you left a rug knocked over that someone could have tripped over, right? I mean, all sorts of things can come up with just that idea of harmful obsessions, right? When you go into the sexual obsessions, there will be people that will obsess and worry about their sexual orientation, you know, whether or not they are homosexual or heterosexual, right? Usually whatever they're worrying about, it's always the opposite that's true. So people that are heterosexual worried about being homosexual and, hom and people that are homosexual worried about being heterosexual. But then there's people that will worry about, um, you know, whatever they may or may not become a pedophile, right? And so that's what they call pedophile OCD. Um, and then, 
even in that category, you can actually throw in relationship OCD because every time you're worrying about like, you know, sexual intrusive images and, and again, these things can happen. They could have sexual intrusive thoughts about family members or, you know, um, you know, deities like Jesus. Right. So these sexual obsessions, um, will kind of, they're, they're in sexual intrusive thoughts. And one of the ways that we determine them as part of OCD is because these thoughts are what we call ego dystonic, right? They don't, they aren't a reflection of what the person really wants for their life. Um, but then you move into scrupulosity and, you know, these thoughts are about like, what if God doesn't exist? Did I commit the unforgivable sin? You know, like the, the obsessions will kind of focus on a religious theme. And then in that same category, you can actually probably throw in relationship OCD because oftentimes with sexual obsessions, the person will question their relationship or love. And that's when they'll get obsessed about that. And, and I want you to kind of like see the pattern here that, you know, these thoughts can just be endless and endless and, and, and they can jump from theme to theme to theme to theme. And so, you know, there's other obsessions like, you know, catastrophe obsessions, like what if someone breaks in my house? What if I left the stove on? What if my house burns down? Right. Um, and you know, while talking about the different sub themes is, is important in the sense of helping people understand that it's a form of OCD, it can become counterproductive because what happens is people think that because they have maybe this type of OCD and this other type of OCD, they have like two things that they, you know, and, and then it becomes overwhelming because like my OCD keeps bouncing from theme to theme when really the goal of treatment is to be able to handle any thought that comes up using the tool sets that you have. Right. And so, Oh, you know, at restoredminds.com, we have a very specific, you know, kind of framework we walk people through, um, with our taking back control program. But when, when it comes to, you know, um, realizing the different forms of OCD, it's important to understand that OCD can latch onto anything, right? Like there used to be, you know, I mean, there's documented cases that are, are very, very ancient, you know, with health anxiety, right? Health OCD, right? Um, and then there's religious OCD and then, you know, more, more of the new age ones, right? Like things that are forming are like COVID, right? Uh, COVID obsessions, um, and, and fears just around that one thing or social media or, you know, there's impulsive obsessions like, you know, what if I snap and yell something out? What if I snap and do something completely against what I would normally do? And it's important to understand that all these things exist, right? But what, what we don't want is to have this information be counterproductive thinking that because you might have experienced multiple themes, that your OCD is more severe or worse or harder to treat than others. It's not. It's really about understanding how this loop works, all the different things that this loop can get get latched on, and then really breaking, again, the behaviors that you're doing that are reinforcing that, right? And that's why the more straightforward of a process you can have with the treatment, it doesn't matter what the OCD throws up next. You always have the same tool set that you would use. And that's why it's, it's just so important to remember that with OCD, OCD and with any anxiety disorder, really, the treatment model is is always the same, right? It's it's behavioral focused, um, and and you know we also have cognitive tools, right? We use cognitive behavioral therapy as well, but focusing on the behaviors that are reinforcing are really your key to success. So, you know, I I hope this video is helpful, and again, I have some links right down in the notes um, to help you on this journey, whether it's additional. Um, you know, free trainings that we have over at restoredminds.com, some downloads and, um, and just other resources that you can, that can, you can use, um, you know, to really help you on this journey. So thank you so much for taking the time, uh, to, to be with us today. We always appreciate your support by liking and subscribing as well and sharing. And I wish you guys a wonderful week and I'll see you over on the next episode. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you found it helpful, chances are someone else will too, and we'd really appreciate your support by liking and subscribing and also sharing this video on your social platforms. Also, if you're looking for additional help, we have some resources right down in the links below to help you on your journey. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I hope to see you soon.